Hello students, let us quickly solve all the multiple uh, choice questions or short questions from GATE 2016. So, from Farm Missionary in Power. So, generally there are seven questions which are uh, one marks, some questions are having negative marks, some questions are not having. So, let us then solve. First question from the Farm Missionary in Power is uh, uh, I have given it one that's ASI or ASI standard for tractor 3 point hitches has been categorized as category I to IV or 1 to 4 on the basis of uh, choices of maximum drawer power, maximum drawer pull, brake power, tractor engine, maximum PTO power. So, if you see um, the hitch points, uh, there are two lower links, one upper links, okay, or upper hitch point you can say. Upper link on this one and lift on. So, you can uh, just have a look at this. And uh, as per the ASA standards, there are four categories are there and there is also zero. So, if you see the table, so the links uh, specific size are given. So, lower hitch point and uh, spacing, lower links, upper link, everything is uh, in millimeters is given. So, these are the standards for uh, everyone's use. So, generally, when the tractors uh, make their uh, uh, models, they have to. Uh, choose uh, one of the specification from this table. So basically if you see, uh, so the categories are basically uh, according to the drawbar power. If you see less than 15 kilowatt, it's uh, categorized as 0. Then uh, according to 15 to 35 kilowatt, 1, 30 to 75 kilowatt, 2, these are the drawbar powers. So a correct answer for this will be the maximum drawbar power. So generally the 3 point hitches has been categorized as category 1 to 4 on the basis of maximum drawbar power. So, this is the answer for the first question. Next question. So, a force of 8 kN is applied perpendicularly to the axis of a crank pin having circular cross sectional area. The allowable shear stress of the crank pin material is 40 Newton per millimeter square. If the crank pin fails under double shear, the design diameter of the crank pin in millimeter will be how much? So, it is a straightforward question. You have to understand uh, how the crank pin looks like and how the force is applied on the uh, crank pin ok so if you see this is uh, the crank shaft ok if you see this is the crank shaft this is the crank shaft ok so and uh, this is the crank pin so crank shaft is, uh, is having on the bearing and is the housing ok crank pin is having like this so this is the crank radius from this to this okay this is called the crank radius okay and this is crank pin so if you see this crank pin will fail uh, when a perpendicular load is, this this is the crank pin exactly this is the crank pin so if you see a load is applied perpendicular to the crank pin axis the load is 8 8 kilonewton okay so then it will fail due to double shear because it will fail here or here okay so these two sides it will fail when it will uh, due to shear failure it will happen so the area of crank pin if we take d is the diameter of the crank pin we have to find out then the area of the crank pin will be 5 pi by 4 d square it's very simple so uh, if you see there are two sides so two uh, shear failure will happen so here and here so if two shear failure will happen then double shear of crank pin so the total area will be how much 2 into pi by 4 d square. So, one uh, side and another side, both are same. Therefore, the area is 2 pi by 4 d square. Now, total force applied is 8 kilonewton. So, that should be equal to allowable shear stress into shear area. So, this is the shear area. So, this is the shear area and allowable shear stress is given. So, which is uh, 40, uh, uh, this, this one, shear stress. Allowable shear stress is given and this is the area and the total uh, force applied is 8000 newton or 8 kilonewton so if you equate with this one very simple so uh, d square will be equal to 8000 into 4 divided by 2 pi into 40 40 is the uh, the shear stress is given therefore d will be this much 11.284 millimeter so, diameter of the uh, crank pin should be minimum this diameter so that it will not fail this is the answer for the this question. So the answer will be 11.284 millimeter. Next, 
the vertical rotor planter has 8 cells in, on each rotor, the rolling radius of the ground wheel is 200 mm, the ratio of RPM of the ground wheel to that of rotor shaft is 2 is to 3, if the planting is done at a forward speed of 3.5 km per hour, the plant spacing in the rows in millimeter will be how much. So, you, you have to remember this, this is a very tricky thing, so the speed of the uh, forward speed is given, but uh, you have to be confident that the forward speed is of no use, because uh, when uh, any planter uh, which is having ground wheel, if ground wheel is there, there is, uh, this is irrelevant of uh, the spacing, because the plant spacing is, uh, uh, you, it is asked, so it is not required here, so only the ground wheel is very important. So let us uh, do, so this is the ground wheel and this is connected to the uh, uh, rotor shaft. So the vertical rotor is here, here is actually there will be 8 uh, cells, here it is uh, uh, shown its number of cells but you just take it 8 cells here, Only, uh, these are 1 cell, 1 cell, okay. Like this uh, in the periphery there will be 8 cells, okay. So if this uh, ground wheel rotates 2, then this shaft will rotate 3 times, it is given 2 is to 3, 2 is to 3 it is given. So it's very simple. If it rotates two, so if you see the rolling resistance uh, radius is given this one. So rolling radius of this one given. So RPM on the ground will be how much? The uh, let it RPM is uh, how much? Uh, let it two in this case. Then pi into two r. Two pi r is the peripheral periphery. So this is perimeter. Okay. So when it rotates in uh, one RPM, then it will uh, move this much. Okay, then that will be equal to that should be equal to RPM of the vertical rotor because uh, there is a ratio 2 is to 3 into number of cell into seat spacing. This you have to remember, this is very simple, uh, not formula, but this is a standard one. Okay, so if it rotates one time, two times, it will rotate three times. So in two times, it will rotate uh, 2 into uh, perimeter. Okay, 2 into perimeter, you see, this is a perimeter. So 200 is given the rolling radius, uh, so two, uh, actually instead of D I have written 2 R, so this one, then there will be uh, 3 times it will rotate and it will give 8 cells, or 8 seats, so 3 into 8 seats, so that means into seat spacing, so there should be equal to this, so from there actually you can find it, seat spacing will be equal to 2 into uh, taking this side, so it will be 104.719, therefore the uh, problem answer is 104.719 millimeter the seat spacing. Okay. Next, the effective temperature scale ET developed in 1972 on the basis of human model is heart rate. Uh, these are the uh, choices given, but uh, you have to see uh, effective temperature uh, is related to what? Temperature of the body is related to physiology of the uh, body. So generally when uh, thermal comfort happens, like you, you see that uh, when the more uh, temperature uh, will be there, then we are sweating. So, the physiologically, the cells and the body behaves so that this will be the answer. So, physiological response will happen according to the change in temperature of the outside in uh, basically the operators. Okay. So, heart rate is not related to physio uh, this temperature. Okay. Blood pressure is not related to temperature. And psychological response is not related to temperature. Only this is the uh, related to temperature, so the answer will be physiological response. Next question, as per ASI standards, the diameter of 1000 RPM PTO shaft will be with 20 spline will be 30 mm, 35 mm, 40 mm and 45 mm. So let us see the table, it's for your uh, information, maybe later on you should know these things. So according to ASI standards, these are the uh, classification type 1, type 2 and type 3, okay, this is type 1, this is type 2, this is type 3. If you see the nominal diameter, standard operating speed, these are the two things most important, other things are their groups and everything, uh, they are, uh, if you study it properly then you can know. So basically the millimeter, uh, nominal diameter and RPM, according to RPM and uh, uh, speed, so, sorry, RPM and uh, diff, uh, torque, so basically the nominal diameter is decided, so type 1 has 35 mm and uh, according to the speed 5, 10, 40 plus minus 10, splines will be 6, so in this case, uh, you see, this is also uh, type 2, 35 mm, 
thousand. So here it will twenty one spline. Twenty one spline. Here six spline. You should remember the six spline thirty uh, five mm and five forty rpm. This is twenty one spline thirty five mm and thousand rpm. So here it will type three is twenty spline twenty and forty uh, five mm for thousand rpm. So this is basically uh, if you see the um, powers will be more in this case. So the answer will be forty five mm. Next in Restrain link operation of three point hitches. The line of pull passes through virtual hitch point. Bending force exists on all links above the virtual hitch point, below the virtual hitch point, through the virtual hitch point. So let us see that uh, whether above or below or through. So if you see for the restrain link, restrain link actually all the uh, weight everything comes from the uh, tractor. This is there is no. Uh, vertical support by this this wheel. Actually, you can see this is the uh, gauge wheel. So this no support is taken from the gauge wheel in this case. All the support of the implement is taken by the tractor. So in this case, if you see the line of uh, pull point of uh, resistance, so so all the soil is meeting at one point. So this is the line of pull. So line of pull is this one. So this line of pull is above this virtual edge point. You can see here. This is virtual edge point. Okay, so you can uh, analyze it properly if you compare with it. It is uh, uh, free link. So free is, uh, link is like this. In free link, actually, all the uh, load is taken by the implement. So you can see here the weight of the implement is acting here, but the G is here. Okay, so so if you see that uh, the this line of pull uh, is uh, resulted of this in this then this passes through or charge point. So here you can see this is passing through these points. So this is the difference. So uh, in this case, the answer will be above the virtual edge point. The bending force exists on the line. Definitely, uh, bending force will be there because uh, it is uh, due to uh, it, it, it try to compress. So the um, upper link, lower link will be having bending. It will, it will try to bend. If you can see. So if you analyze properly. So you can find out the answer. So you should remember this. This is very important one. Maybe next case uh, may come also. So next uh, is the last question from the multiple choice or small uh, questions. That is, a gear pump discharges 100 liter per minute against a system pressure of 15 megapascal. Power efficiency of the pump is 0.75. Input power. Power to run the pump in kilowatt will be how much? It's a straightforward uh, question, so it's a very simple one. Uh, let us uh, just uh, calculate quickly. So output power of the pump we know that is let it P zero, P O in kilowatt is uh, discharge into pressure. How much discharge it is giving? So let it in meter cube per second and pressure uh, developing that is kilopascal. So if you see kilo is there for kilowatt and meter cube per second uh, discharge into pascal that is uh, watt. As you know, meter cube per second. If you see meter square, uh, uh, so meter uh, uh, newton into meter per second. So then you can find out easily. So this is kilowatt. Okay. So now um, then the uh, input power of the pump will be how much? So that is PI should be equal to PO. Uh, that is output divided by operating efficiency. So PO is this much. This is uh, already from here. Okay. So this is output power and uh, how much this is input power to, to the pump? The input power only the overall efficiency you have to divide it. So that means you need more power uh, because some losses are there. So clearly, so just putting the value, the so pump discharge is given 100 liter per minute converted into meter cube per second because the um, unit is this much meter cube per second kilopascal. The pressure is 15 megapascal. So It will be 15 to 20 kilopascal because it's in kilopascal, so you convert it to kilopascal. It is meter per second. You convert it to meter. When you putting the values, the input power of the pump will be uh, just put the value 100 into 20 to the minus 3 into 15 into 20 to the minus 3 divided by 60 because 60 was there so per minute. Uh, it was there is per second. So uh, it's 0.75 by the overall efficiency given. So if you put, then you will get the answer. That is 33.33 kilometer. So input power to the Uh, pump will be uh, 33.33. This is the answer. So this this is uh, all for uh, gate 2016. So goodbye.